What an asshole! Podcasting from Basshole Studios in Hollywood, California. California. You're listening to I'm an Asshole with Doug Bass. We've all been one, so let's talk about it. Now, here's your host, Doug Bass. He's an asshole, sir. He's an asshole. Hey, welcome to I'm an Asshole. I am your host, Doug Bass. Thank you for joining us once again. Um, I have a very special guest on our show today. Her name is Sarah Albritton. She is a stand-up comic. She is a writer. She is an actress. She's a creator. And it was her birthday yesterday, so she does it all. So she is here today in the studio. Hello, Sarah. Hello. How's it going? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm great. Yeah. I'm very relaxed after yesterday we had a socially distanced birthday in the park. And That's it was right. simple and lovely. It actually. was lovely, yeah. You got to make sure that you're just socially distancing if you have birthday parties during this whole crisis. Yeah, but yeah. It, it was nice. Uh, several people came at different times. We had blankets and drinks and everything, and it was just a great time to see people I hadn't seen in months. Like people I used to see several times a week mm-hmm. that I still hadn't seen in person in four months. Yeah, so. birthdays are like the one thing where like people like show up to them. You know, it's like you can't get them to come out to comedy shows or anything else that you're doing. But it's either like a birthday or a wedding. And they're like, okay, I guess I'll go. Yeah. Like I used to say that about friends I had in like Venice. I'm like, oh, like I'll see them like once a year yeah. for their birthday or my birthday. Yeah, especially in LA. That's like the thing. If you live like, you know, three miles away, then you may not see them ever again. Yeah. But it's not even that. But but now that there's no traffic, it's not that bad. No, now it's perfect. Like if, if LA stays this way, like people will see each other more often, I feel like. Yeah, let's. I mean, I I would like things to get better, <laughs> you know, like well, a yes, vaccine and yes. be able to. Be I would like things people. to get better, but I would like the traffic to stay the same. Okay, thanks. which I don't yeah. know if that's possible, but maybe we all can learn something from that. Like you know, like let's not drive as much or get rid of half the cars somehow or something. Yeah, I mean, I think that's where you get a lot of stress and you get a lot of assholes on on traffic too. Yes. Well, we were on. I think we were on the road to that with like Uber and Uber Pool and these scooters and everything. And now it's like complete opposite. People are like, no, I'm not doing the pool. The pool doesn't exist. The scooters, I don't want to touch them. You know, now it's like. I I feel like the scooters are a bit safer than being in an Uber, but I understand if you have to. Well, now you can rent a scooter, I think, and they, they, they disinfect it and bring it to your house. Oh. For like a week or a month, whatever you want it for. Well, that's kind of nice. Yeah, it's kind of nice. I can see the, the benefit of that, but it's also your electricity you have to use to charge it and everything. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that adds up. Who knows? Um, so you had a good birthday. I did. It, right. was, it was good. It was uh, very chill, simple, but really fun. Great mm-hmm. to see people. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Sarah is a uh, stand-up comedian. Um, she does a lot of different projects in LA here. She uh, hosts a uh, show called Wild and Weird Comedy. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, we did. It just, it feels weird to say like, I currently do this. Something went off. Yeah, I know. I forgot to shut my mail. See, this is the problem when you're recording this stuff. You have all this crap on your computer. See, all you do is you turn the notifications off. I did. I just closed the mail thing. It was open and it still makes sounds when someone emails you, but now it's closed. No, you can go up to the top and say notifications snooze for an hour. You yeah, can do I, that for I, all sound notifications I on your computer. I clicked that, but I guess it didn't work. Just saying. That's I know. Right. I've been in the same boat because... Um, so, yes, I, I did have a show called Wild Weird Comedy. It seems weird to contemporize it because I don't know when we'll have another one because of mm-hmm. how things are. Because it's weird right now. And wild. Everything is wild and weird right now. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, we ran it for... It would have been two years this month, um, but we were running it out of Bar Lubitsch, and the last show we had was March 8th, which was also my last live show I did. Mm-hmm. Um, but seems like a year ago almost. It seems like a but really, really long time. This is definitely right. the longest I've gone without doing stand up in person. Mm-hmm. Uh, like before this pandemic, it was like maybe 10 days I gone without doing stand up. Have you been doing it? In any, six any, years, over, any, over six years. Right. Have you been doing Zoom shows or anything like that? I did a couple in the beginning and then I was like, no, I'm just going to focus on writing scripts and work mm-hmm. on all that because I was working on a couple pilots and a spec for all the fellowships. Right. And so Sarah, yeah, she's also a writer. She uh, her, her, her pilot just uh, got accepted uh, Page Awards. Was a quarter final, semi quarter? What is it? It's a quarter finalist. Quarter finalist. So her script, uh, personal fouls, 
that I wrote with Mark Stevens. Yes, Mark Stevens. He's co-writer. also a comedian. And so, yeah, we've been really focused on writing several scripts. And so then I took some time off, but now I'm looking at trying to do some more Zoom shows. I'm doing a, a Zoom show tomorrow that's for London. So it's oh. 8 p.m. in London, which will be noon our time. So that'll be interesting. Do you have any fans in London? That you know of? Um, I I have a couple friends in London. Right. I, I would, so will they watch? You think? Um, I'm not sure. I'm gonna post. I'll post yeah. about it. I'll just be like, if anyone wants. To, it's also 3 p.m. What? Yeah, Eastern time, I guess. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. we'll see. But is is an old buddy of mine that I did uh, classes at I.O. with that now lives in London, and he's like, hey, do you want to do stand up? I was like, sure. See, that's the one positive thing about this. Like, you're able to do shows in like different countries and cities that you normally probably wouldn't do. Yeah, but it's not the same. But I mean, you know, whatever. It's 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 internet, you know. And I haven't performed my old sets in so long. I'm like, uh, right. am I gonna forget them? We'll That's kind of how I feel. It's like, yeah, like not being on stage or not performing in front of people. I don't even know. I don't know how comfortable I would feel. Like, you know, it's like, I don't know. It, well, it's also different because you don't get the same reactions. I think the I think with a lot of things. Um, you could do remotely and it's, it's yeah. not the same, but like music, comedy music, even sketches can go even like the host for late night that works remotely. I'm not a hundred percent sure if stand up works that well remotely because the energy of the crowd is like so important right. to that. And you're not sure like who, like on these zoom shows, you're not sure who is an audience member and who's just another comic just hanging out and you can't hear the laughs. You can maybe see someone like going like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like <laughs> laughing, but they're, they're they're muted, so it's like they want to be polite, like to turn off the sound in their home. But like, it's like we need those laughs. But then their dogs barking in the back or something. Well, the other problem with Zoom is like if you have it on a thing where it's like the main person's in focus and that's like the speaker. Yeah, you can't have the sound on because if somebody laughs, then they become the speaker. So right. That's, that's the. And the, then there's a delay. Yeah. And comedy is all about timing. So there's like so, that audible delay where it's like, uh, you know, it's know, like tra- two seconds can make a joke work or not. And it's like, oh, wait, you didn't. Go, oh, yeah. Wait, there's a delay. Oh, your Internet sucks. Shit. Yeah. So that's also <laughs> what you're worried about. It's like, uh, I think I want to start like to have a joke at the beginning and be like, hey, if if I freeze it, I'll just pretend I fell asleep for a second and mm-hmm. then I'll go back to doing jokes. <laughs> right. Yeah, of course. Um, so so this is exciting news that your, your script got into the, uh, yeah. the quarterfinals of the, uh, of the page awards. Um, yeah. I read the script. It's very funny. Um, well, I wish you luck with that. Yeah, hopefully, Thanks. you know, keeps going. Yeah. Um, and you're working on some other writing projects. Yeah. So I'm also writing. I'm taking I have narcolepsy. So mm-hmm. in case you guys don't know, yes. I have a sleeping disorder called narcolepsy. And I had a lot of stand up material about that. So I'm taking that and kind of formulating that into a one hour one woman show. So I've been working on that. A um, couple other pilots in the works. And yeah, I mean, I've been pretty focused. Right. So you're tr- you're trying to take your stand up comedy about your narcolepsy and turn it into one woman show. You're yes. talking to me about mm-hmm. that. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's a whole different audience, I think, that can bring you know bring themselves to see you perform that kind of stuff. I try not to be an intentional asshole, right? But um, I've definitely done some assholeish things, especially when I in my a little bit when I was a little bit younger. Uh, yeah. And Let's Chicago. hear about uh, like how young. Like when I was kid? No. Right. Uh, well, oh yeah. When I was a, oh, when were you I was a were you an asshole when you were a kid? Oh my god! When I was a teenager, it was horrible. Well, that's when most people are assholes so when they're when they're kids horrible. or high school. That's what I'm thinking. I feel so bad when I was uh, so. My mother, I feel so horrible about how I treated my mother when I was a teenager. I was a complete asshole to her. Like 14, 15? Yeah. yeah. 14, 15, 16, 17. Like she did, I, she's like the one person, she did not even shed a tear when I like went away to school. I've met your mom. Away. Your mom's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were going to say my mom was hot. <laughs> your mom's hot and <laughs> she cool. She is hot though. Yes. But uh, um, she's, she's awesome. But I felt I, like as an adult, I feel so horrible. And most women have a situation where they're also very... Um, antagonistic with their mothers and in teenage years and i was awful i would shout we would get in these awful fights dad thought she was gonna go crazy so when i went away to college she didn't even, she was like all right bye see ya she didn't even like cry she's like get she out wasn't of upset get out of my house <laughs> they were just ready but i did a lot of shitty things as a teenager i mean i used to do graffiti i tagged where outside like under underpasses there, really yeah like i would sneak out with I always my wonder, how does that work like because i mean you know we live here in la in the cities and like yeah you'll be driving around and then the next day there's a huge mural of graffiti and i'm like how do these people get away with doing that and the cops don't see it and well, you do it at like four in the morning 
So no one sees it. Usually there's a cop driving around. Well, it was, no? I'm, Louisville, Kentucky is not I as know. crazy. And yeah, I, but I'm just saying it happens here too. And like no one gets caught and it's fine. So you would go out at 4 a.m. and graffiti Louisville. Well, maybe not 4 a.m., but like 2 a.m. You know, like, yeah, late, like after midnight. Alone or with like no, a, no, a, a no, gang? No. Never alone. Not a gang. <laughs> it wasn't a gang. Actually, I had a couple friends that also were like, in the artist creative, like did photography All too. Right. So you had like a backpack full of spray paint. Well, we also had to get caps. So there are specifically caps that like thin out because like regular spray can cans are just too wide mm -hmm. to use. So you want like thinner specific ones that have different uh, sizes right. so that you could do cooler designs. And, and what would you, what would you paint? I would paint my, my name, the name, your I, name? My, my, my graffiti name. What was your, uh, not your real name. No, my graffiti name. What was name. your graffiti That'd name? That would be the worst graffiti person ever. That well, you just said your name and I was like, well, no, you're no, a you're, teenager. You're Maybe you're not that smart yet. I was like, <laughs> no, you're Sarah Albritton was here. No, you know, your like, tag <laughs> name. What was um, your tag name? Um, well, it was Sapphire with an F, S-A-F. I R E, but mm -hmm. I would do S A F for short. Usually, uh, t taggers would a lot of times abbreviate for three letters to right. be short. So, how long did you go out and do this kind of stuff? And and where would you paint it? Like on a on a house or like no, a, no, never a house. Oh, right. Just right. like I don't know, I don't like know how this works. Underpass, like An underpass near a train, near a yeah, like those right. kinds of things. And so we would different kind of, colors. Yeah, we would have different colors. How long would it take you to do like one tag? Oh, not that long. Like it would take like. 20 minutes or something. 20 minutes in the same spot. Yeah, maybe maybe even not that See, long. See, that seems, I, I that seems too dangerous. It's, it's been so long that I don't remember. That's crazy. The point is, I was an asshole as a kid. And I also used to, I did do ha, go through a phase that I think a lot of girls do where we steal stuff. And I don't know why. Oh, okay, yeah. I used to steal. What kind of stuff did you steal? Um, I uh, sometimes clothes. Clothes? Mm -hmm. Like from where? Like Macy's or something? Uh, yeah, somewhere. We didn't have Macy's. We had like Lazarus or something there. You know, Lazarus, like, I don't know. No, no. Is. I right. think it became a Macy's. I don't know. So a department store apartment stores um yeah just like little stuff like like chapstick and it, it was for the thrill it yeah, was totally you know what thrill. i still chapstick to this day mm -hmm. today i will still chapstick there's but, certain things i don't want to pay for i don't want to pay for batteries I, yeah chapstick is another thing i'm just like this is this is why is this five dollars why is the thing a chapstick five fucking dollars know, that's ridiculous but but there's like lots of little things i would steal um i will buy something else mm. i'll buy a couple things and then i'll take the chapstick and be like put it on my lips and be like, well, I'm just going to take this, <laughs> but I'm still, I'm still buying something. Uh, like, this is horrible. I don't know why I'm admitting this, but hey, well, it's an asshole podcast. You want to admit? Well, yeah, asshole. but it's also like, you know, there's a, I think there's a little bit of klepto in all of us somehow. For some reason, it's like a thrill. I it's mean, kind of like, I want to see if I get caught kind of like maybe how you were tagging things. Yeah. I mean, did it, you get caught? Did no, the cops ever catch no you? I never got caught. I've never been arrested. I've gotten, I've gotten away with a lot of things. I've never mm -hmm. gotten arrested. But your mom knew you were doing this. No, no, no. My parents didn't know. I got, away. I was, I was a smart kid. I got away with a lot of shit. So when my parents went out of town, now they might know if they listen to this. No. Yeah. I told them now, <laughs> but they were just like, like I always assumed cause there was a weekend they went away and my friend had an older sister who's like 22 in college that it was like, oh, my friend and her sister will stay with me in the house uh, while they're gone, right? Mm -hmm. And we threw a massive party, like a college slash high school party where her friends and my, because they had a like, we had a pool. This we had is like in a, high school? Yeah. Yeah. And it was a massive party. And I was sure. What went down? Oh, so much we got i got so i'm pretty sure i smoked something that was like maybe a little laced with something because i was in my hot tub and somebody <laughs> laced yeah oh laced means God. there's like something else yeah in it. i know yeah so, that's dangerous. so somebody splashed water from my hot tub in my eye and i was like there's acid in my eye. i was like hallucinating thinking there was acid in my eye or chlorine something. yeah it was yeah uh, <laughs> still burns but the point was we uh, the thing was that i was a smart kid though because we had uh there was a clubhouse that was like you know half a mile like a third of a mile half a mile from our house and they had like a big parking lot so i just told everyone park in there don't park by the house and then walk over yeah so then no, none of the neighbors knew and i always assume mom and dad knew that we had this through big huge party but they never knew they didn't know they <laughs> yeah. had no idea no uh but i did get caught for smoking weed once so my cousin um tasha at the time she had uh, she had come to visit us. It was the first time we'd seen Tasha in like nine years because that part of the family was a little bit more distant. So we had flown her for my grandmother's 80th. She came, she, she, wait, she came to this party you're having? No, she, or, she came to Louisville, Kentucky. Okay, this is for And yeah. she brought weed from um, from um, California because that's where she lived. And then so she gave, she brought me weed. And I had already been, I had already been a pretty much a pothead at this point. You know, I smoked weed a lot. And so, so your house was always like, there was a party going on. No. I Did mean, the neighbors ever find out about your parties? 
No, I mean, I maybe they did, and they just were just like, all right, you know, like Sarah's a good kid. This is Sarah's party music. This is back. Oh my god, back in high school. Mm, I don't know. Maybe. I don't remember. I, I was also into like punk as well. I went to like the Brick House, which is like a famous punk. What is that? Bardstown Road Youth Community Center. It used to be on Bardstown Road in Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, yeah. Give them a shot. It's not there anymore. No, it's not uh, there right. anymore. It's, it's been gone for a long time, but we used to go there and go like punk shows. And I was trying to be like a little emo person. Mm. I would hang out at like skate park. Were you emo? Skate park. I don't know. I, I didn't know what I was. I, I was yeah. a lot of things. You're I experimenting. Just, I was experimenting with lots of different things. Right. But Weed yeah. and uh, laced hot tub water mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, I mean, but I was I was a pretty good kid aside from being an asshole to my parents about stuff. Right. Like I remember one time, mom and I got in such a big fight. She banned me from going to junior prom, and it was like the, uh, like the next day. And you didn't go? No, I didn't. No, yeah. she she was. Did I you mean, get grounded a lot? Uh, yeah, but I definitely deserved it. Um, <laughs> now, what was ground being grounded for you? It, go to your room. Uh, Stay home. You can't go out this weekend. That kind yeah, of thing. yeah. yeah. It, no TV. Sometimes uh, no internet or oh. things like that. Um, so yeah, it was. I could see you talking back to your parents. I could oh, see you being a little smart ass. I was, I was total. I was a total asshole. Like, <laughs> I was awful. And like one time, at, you know, when Tasha was in town, my uh, I was smoking weed, waiting for her on our patio. I was smoking. She brought a bowl and brought weed. I was just spinning in this spinny chair. So you started weed, weed young. Yeah, I think I smoked weed when I was fourteen. Wow. See, I didn't have weed until I was um, in college. But also freshman year, I think college. When I was a teenager, though, I was, or I thought I was in love with this guy who went to a lockdown facility, um, to give you Lock, some perspective. Locked? Oh, like a, like a prison? Yeah, uh, like a youth prison. Yeah. Oh, ju juvie. Juvenile hall. Not exactly juvenile. It's like, a, it's, it was called lockdown. Lockdown facility. And you were in love with this guy? I thought I was. How did you meet this guy? What did he do? In school. Like I, he, I think it was like two felonies and like seven misdemeanors. A felony. Yeah, it was not good. Like I was he was like, your age. Uh, he was like a year and a half older than me. Wow. But See, usually kids at that yeah, there's misdemeanors or like you know this. Yeah, this kid's no, a punk it was. Uh, in there for a couple yeah, weeks. he was like a punk. felony is a big deal. Like what? What kind of felony? Like I, I actually don't remember. I you don't know? I don't remember. How do you not remember that? Because looking through my journals as a fucking teenage girl, I'm all like, oh, his eyes, his hair. I, yeah, but I would be like, shit. oh my god, his eyes, his hair, his hair murdered only two people. <laughs> Just in parentheses. I don't think he hurt anybody, but it was attempted I mean, murder. I'm actually like so mad. I think my my husband. He could like, have tried to kill you. Oh my god. <laughs> I used to, I was the only person that wrote to him in lockdown. Oh, so you were I, a pen pal with him. I, I was, and he, wow. would call, he would call me when he was able to. Um, it was very weird. But you had no idea what he did. You I just mean, don't I know he probably got caught for possession. That was probably oh, Okay, for so that. it was drugs. Maybe, you know, maybe stealing, maybe intent to sell. I have no idea. Right, right, right. But, you still keep in touch with this guy? Um, no, he passed away. Oh, okay. I, I, but I actually hadn't Sorry been in touch that. with him in over 10 years mm -hmm. uh, because he I, because I grew up and I realized, OK, yeah, this is who this person is. And that's not uh, right. Sexy anymore. <laughs> well, rest in peace to the uh, yeah. felon. But the, um, love, the love, love of your youth, the felon, whatever his name is. But I, I don't know. Like, I think I definitely was a, an asshole of a child. But I was also like a, you know, try to beat to my own drum kind of thing. Yeah.